Two House panels looking to review how the NSA handled communications it obtained between Israeli officials and members of Congress. This happening while Israel was lobbying to block the Iran nuclear deal. The Wall Street Journal reporting that the NSA maintained surveillance of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other U.S. allies despite a promise from President Obama two years ago that the practice would end. Let's bring in former CIA analyst Fred Flights with more. Fred, are you really surprised by this? Well, uh, Dagan, good morning. I'm not surprised that nations spy on other nations. Frankly, there's probably good reason we're going to have to spy on the German and French heads of state someday. Uh, but this is an issue where the private conversations of members of Congress and American Jewish organizations were being gathered up in the run-up to the vote to disapprove the Iran nuclear deal. This is something that's not supposed to happen. There's an NSA rule that if these discussions are gathered, discussions of members of Congress, it has to be destroyed unless it, it constitutes significant foreign intelligence. This was not significant foreign intelligence. This was domestic intelligence in a dispute between the White House and Congress. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of heads should roll for this. Fred, it's Matt Murray. Um, we also had reported in the spring, of course, that Israel was spying on the U.S. and had its own interests uh, in, in terms of the talks. The administration, I think, argued uh, then when uh, Benjamin Netanyahu went to Congress and might argue in this case, look, Israel was interfering itself in a domestic political matter, therefore it became a national security matter. What would you say to that argument? Look, I, I have no problem with, with President Obama wanting to spy on Israel. This is something that goes on. Israel <laughs> spies on the U.S. But it's very specific. The rules of NSA, when there are discussions of members of Congress, they're private discussions, this has to be destroyed unless this, the NSA director determines there's a compelling foreign intelligence reason to provide this information. This was a domestic dispute, not a foreign intelligence concern. Well, was, was it just shoddy espionage, potentially, Fred? I mean, that's not, I'm not dismissing the story, but if, if it's just shoddy spycraft. Well, there's two th th things here. NSA had a responsibility not to provide this information. Where are the whistleblowers? Uh, you talked about Edward Snowden, uh, mm -hmm. you know, basically being a repugnant individual. This was obviously a violation of NSA procedures. Where mm -hmm. were the analysts and officials coming forward to Congress or to their inspector general saying this was going on? I was in the intelligence business for 25 years. I would never have been a party to this. So, do, really quick, sorry, Kevin. So, are you, whose heads do you think should roll then? How far up the chain does it go? Well, the NSA director was supposed to issue a waiver to allow this type of information, the private discussion of congressmen to provide it to the Hill, I mean to, to the White House. Uh, we have to find out whether that happened. And if he agreed to do this, I think he should resign. And I think the director of national intelligence also bears responsibility. And we have to find out what NSA analysts, whether the intelligence community lays on to the National Security Council, how were they involved in this? So my question is, how can we enact that? How can people's heads actually roll? I mean, we look at James Clapper. He said they didn't spy on U.S. citizens. We know that came to be, uh, you know, not true. Um, he said that in front of Congress, right? Nothing ever happened. So we're not seeing any heads roll on anything, especially when it comes to national security. So who can make these decisions, right? Is James Clapper going to be able to fire some analysts who spied on, uh, you know, citizens or uh, congressmen? I think it's possible that intelligence officials could be held accountable because Congress is going to be pretty angry. But frankly, this is an issue for the 2016 campaign. This represents a lack of leadership and ethics, the fact that this went on. The White House knew they were re receiving material they weren't supposed to have. They basically were saying to NSA, well, we're not trying to collect or not collect this information, but if you collect it, we certainly would appreciate it. We need to hear the presidential candidate explain how they will bring new leadership and a new level of ethics that will not allow this kind of thing to happen again. Fred, what, what, what should happen next in Congress? Is there going to be, there's, there's talk of investigations. We know the Israelis are going to be, uh, uh, seem to be con contemplating a formal protest. What's the process from here on out? What should happen next in your view? Well, we need... We need full investigations, even though maybe no one will be held accountable, because this will send a message to intelligence professionals that this is unacceptable. And if this happens, you have to report it to your management, to the inspector generals, and to Congress. I mean, 
there's, there's a certain rule here. This, this was probably a violation of the Fourth Amendment, the spying on American citizens w without a warrant. But these American citizens weren't involved in terrorism or criminal activities. They were involved in a political dispute. And using a powerful intelligence agency to spy on another branch of government, that's not supposed to go on in this country. That's banana republic stuff. Fred, good to see you. Happy New Year. Fred Flights, thanks for joining us Happy on New this Year. New Year's Eve.